So thank you for, introduce, uh, for introducing me. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Yu Chengjing, um, a PhD student at the University of Louvain in Belgium. Uh, this work was done with uh, Nava Tintorif and uh, Catherine Ferbert. Uh, today, uh, in this uh, presentation, I hope to convince you a sweet spot uh, might, be uh, might uh, exist uh, between uh, the user control and the cognitive load. So, uh, as we all know, user control is uh, an important uh, research direction for recommend system. Uh, um, it can lead to higher satisfaction and higher trust. And these figures shows how users can control uh, the music recommenders differently. And uh, in this table, the first uh, column summarize the three most common uh, recommended components for user control. And the second column uh, shows um, the way the user can interact with these components. And the last column shows the representative systems that support the corresponding uh, control components. So, um, uh, if, a user, uh, if, if, if users are provided with um, more user control, uh, we expect they can um, get better recommendations. Uh, well, uh, they also need, they may also need to think about uh, what these different control mean. Um, actually, there is a trade-off between the controllability and uh, uh, um, cognitive load. Uh, uh, user, uh, one, uh, one user get additional um, controllability. Uh, they may uh, also have a higher cognitive load. Uh, therefore, in our study, we, uh, we aim to uh, offer rich uh, user inter uh, offer rich uh, user control while um, ensuring the acceptable uh, cognitive load. Uh, to reach our goal, instead of having this one size fits all approach, we have to um, uh, think about the personal characteristics for personalized user control. In this study, we consider two different uh, personal characteristics. We consider uh, viral, memory, uh, viral memory capacity as it uh, has shown the effects on uh, viralization effectiveness and uh, the cognitive load. Also, we consider the music sophistication uh, since it measures the music uh, domain expertise. And uh, we expect users with higher music so sophistication can handle more user control. That's why we consider these two um, personal characteristics. And this um, slide shows it's uh, in our study, we consider um, the effects uh, of both uh, the setting of user control and uh, personal characteristics on recommend system uh, with the three um, investigated uh, um, factors. And uh, we built this uh, system uh, using Spotify recommendation API. Uh, this figure shows uh, user interface for this uh, system. Uh, as you say here, it's from the left to the right. So it shows how user can control the user profile and uh, algorithm parameters and the recommendations. Um, so now let's um, introduce uh, the design of our user study. Uh, we follow this uh, between subject user study and we have uh, eight uh, different uh, 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 study conditions. And uh, uh, we evaluate each condition in terms of uh, recommendation acceptance and the cognitive load and the selected uh, factors from the user-centric uh, evaluation framework. And in total, we recruited 240 subjects from the Mechanic Amazon Torque. And uh, we paid the $2 for around 30 minutes work. And uh, uh, firstly, uh, we ask user to watch a, a video tutorial 
and then we uh, ask them to fill a pre-study questionnaire where we get, uh, we can measure us users' uh, music sophistication and uh, also their viral memory capacity. Um, and we also have a study task, uh, which is we, um, we ask users to choose a scenario for creating a playlist. Uh, and then we will ask them to explore sounds based on the, recommend, uh, based on the recommendations. And uh, when they are satisfied with these recommendations, they will uh, they need to read all the sounds in the final uh, playlist. And uh, after that, they will fill a post uh, questions um, there, uh, which is measured by the um, seven points like skills. Okay, um, yeah, don't be scared of this complex uh, figure. I will not go into deep, uh, I will not go into details, but um, uh, I would like to say this study uh, focuses on the uh, complex interaction between um, the user control uh, and, uh, um, cognitive, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, personal characteristics, and uh, we try to understand this interaction effects on cognitive load and uh, recommendation uh, acceptance uh, to test uh, our proposed or uh, to test all our proposed hypothesis uh, simultaneously uh, we use a uh, structure a uh, structure equation uh, modeling to analyze the detected uh, um, effects um, uh, which allows uh, to link all the uh, uh, detected effects uh, together um, now let's uh, um, uh, um, going um, to the the uh, the results of SEM model. Um, first, let's see the the effects of uh, control settings on uh, cognitive load and acceptance. Um, so we see it's um, one user have a single uh, control for the. Uh, user profile and uh, algorithm parameters, it, uh, it will positively uh, influence cognitive load. But uh, uh, when we combine the user profile uh, with uh, uh, algorithm parameters, it will negatively influence the cognitive load. Moreover, this cognitive load uh, also negatively influence the interaction times where the mediator choice difficulty. Uh, regarding the acceptance, we find the direct uh, uh, we find the direct uh, effects, also the indirect uh, effects via the perceived quality. And for the direct effects, we say uh, one user control a single control component of user profile and uh, algorithm parameters. Uh, it will negatively influence the acceptance. But when they combine the algorithm parameters with another uh, control components, it will show the positive effects on the acceptance. And uh, for the indirect effects, we say it's when user only control a single con control component, it always has the negative effects on acceptance. Um, but for the interaction effects, uh, that is uh, uh, controlling the multiple control components, it has uh, positive effects on acceptance. Uh, therefore, we can accept the hypothesis one and two. And, and uh, then let's take a look at the effects of personal characteristics. Uh, we don't find the significant effects of viral memory, but we say the, uh, the positive effects of music sophistication on acceptance uh, via the perceived quality. Thus, we can accept the hypothesis six. So in conclusion, it's uh, our result has some um, uh, uh, implications. Uh, one user have uh, uh, the single control. Uh, we say it has the worst uh, um, trade-off uh, between the cognitive load and uh, acceptance. Uh, but uh, one user uh, uh, controls uh, uh, two uh, control components, especially when combines the uh, algorithm parameters with another control component, it uh, hits the sweet spot between the controllability and uh, acceptance. 
um, uh, well, one user can combines the, all these control components, we, although we see the higher difference, but we don't see the significant uh, difference for the cognitive load. Although we don't find the effects of uh, uh, the, um, uh, although we don't find uh, the significant, uh, significant effects of uh, uh, viral memory, but we see the positive effects of uh, um, uh, the music sophistication uh, on quality via the perceived uh, uh, acceptance. So, um, uh, for the, our future work, we try to expand this stem, we try to expand this model uh, by investing by investing other uh, um, pers uh, personal characteristics, and also we try to say some uh, find some um, um, the um, adaptive strategies suitable to the personal characteristics. In the end, we also want to validate our research findings in other application domains, such as news and online learnings. Thank you for kind attention. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, so no questions. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Yuchen, for the very good presentation. Uh, just one thing I would like you to, to kind of give me more detailed description about the user controllability. Uh, I think based on your presentation, it seems there are three components. One is the user profile. The other one is recommendation. I believe the other one is the parameters, right? Uh, so, like, user profile is very easy to understand. Basically, user can to set up their own profile. But recommender, uh, does that mean you have multiple uh, recommender methodology or algorithm behind that so the user can choose that? Is that the case? Uh, actually, we don't give a control to choose what, uh, which algorithm because it's, uh, we, um, we build this system just on top of uh, um, uh, you know, this Spotify recommender recommenders, and uh, here we just uh, allow user to tweak uh, the algorithm by adjusting the weight of each type of uh, uh, this, uh, um, this source. For example, it's, as you see, the most uh, uh, left uh, column, we allow user to select the top uh, artist seats and uh, genre and uh, um, the track seats. So we, we allow user to uh, adjust the width of the tab. Okay, so basically this. for the recommender uh, uh, kind of a, a control is the user who has a capability to adjust some parameter or input to the model. Is, is that the case? Um, I think so. Okay. Uh, what's the last one? The last one is, uh, sorry, I, I forgot the, the, the three components. What's the last component of controllability? Uh, you mean the last one is? Uh, I remember it's a kind of some parameter they uh -huh. can adjust. Yeah, uh, you mean it's adjust uh, uh, the three components together? Yeah, yeah, what's the three component, right? What's the last component? The, the last component? Uh, I think uh, it has three components. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can go back to the, to the slide. Yeah, I can, I can show. It's quite slow for <laughs> paging this slide. Sorry. I don't know. Yeah, here ah. we are. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, user profile, algorithm parameter, and recommendation, right? So, uh, so par uh, algorithm parameter, could, could you just uh, explain one of that to just show how the user can adjust that? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, as you see, as I said, it's uh, you can adjust uh, the weight of the tab of uh, uh, the the, select, uh, the selected uh, um, seats. Okay. So here we have three types of seats, right? The top artist, top okay. top drums, and top tracks. And uh, so the user can adjust the weight of each type, and as a result, it uh, will influence the proportion of the recommendations from this type of seats. Thank you. So, so the last one actually is a recommendation result. Right? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's where they adjust, right? Yeah. So they can adjust the, your result. And then from here, from there, they can see, uh, I think probably get the best result. You can, at least you can get the feedback from the user. 
Yeah, based on that. right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Finally, yeah. I understand this. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank One you. final short question, then we continue. Yeah, that's a very short question. Perhaps more for now. Um, does it still make sense to work on uh, systems that are controllable? Um, I mean, do users really want to control uh, complex things? And there was a recent paper published by Votro in, in this year that showed that it's not so much the fact that you can control that um, the, the sign or the signal that something is controllable that makes a user satisfied, but in the end they, they don't really use it. So, well, what's the point of of making uh, things controllable. So this might be very domain specific. One of the projects I'm planning to start up now looks at Twitter data, and there I think you have a very sensitive issue of whether or not you're filtering content uh, that's sensitive to the audience that's receiving it. And there even the illusion of control, if you like, I think is crucial. I think the fact that you hide information from people and they're not able to see what's being hidden from them um, has major implications. I think the percentage of time that people actually look at explanations is very small, but I think the case is that when they do, when something is shocking or surprising, this is where we really can have a fundamental impact. Yeah, well, nice question, thank you. Yeah, so uh, thanks again, Yu Cheng, and we welcome on uh, the next speaker. Okay. So